The United States incarcerates more people per capita than any other country. We have 5% of the world's population, but 25% of the incarcerated individuals. When you look at everybody who has a record, it's about a third of the population. It's massive. What we were investigating was how could we translate advocacy and reform efforts into a visual language. And if we knew the power of one individual story, what would it be like to look at 40, 50, 100 individual stories? Future Ideas at Alcatraz is an exhibition created by individuals with conviction histories as they visualize their future selves. So many people in this room merit acknowledgement for the contributions you've made to this project. I kept noticing how California was really leading reform efforts nationally. I built a relationship with this organization in Los Angeles called the Anti-Recidivism Coalition. Over five years, the Anti-Recidivism Coalition members and I have been meeting and planning and running workshops. My commitment was to investigate that difficult space of re-entering society after periods of incarceration. The project has grown to partnerships with over 20 community organizations. The exhibition is a container for a series of community programs. Future IDs at Alcatraz Release Party is one of 26 programs that we've had to date in the exhibition space. Alcatraz has been designated as an international site of conscience. The National Park Service invited our program because it could further that platform. Alcatraz is a very historic site. We get around two million visitors a year. People come out here wanting to learn about prisons. Uh, unfortunately, People tend to come out here with very narrow visions of who or what a prisoner is. And so the unique part of this exhibit is that it shows a lot of the, the multifaceted identities that make up a lot of people who are or have been incarcerated. I am a former juvenile lifer. At the age of 16, I was tried as an adult and convicted, sentenced to 25 years to life in prison, and I was released after 20 years. Parole departments had no idea what to do with us as young lifers because most lifers who were released were in their 60s or 70s. Here I was, 36 years old, wanting to build a life and get a job. I'm here today with some of the core project collaborators. We were working to try to change uh, some of the laws. Uh, Dominic Bell told this amazing story at one of our meetings about meeting with a very busy senator. Let's be honest, politicians have a lot of concerns. Voting on behalf of a bill that may release a group of people that have been deemed dangerous to society. I told the senator that you don't have a lot of time to he sit here and entertain my story. I'll just show you something. Dominic pulled out his old inmate ID, and then he pulled out his university student ID. And he said, that's the difference. And we decided that there was something there worth investigating. Each artist in this exhibition did a lot of individual soul searching to identify some of their future goals and intentions. And then they translated that into an identification card. I was the boogeyman in the Korean community. I was the doctor's kid who got into trouble, and I could see why people were so uncomfortable around me. You know, it's I was the person that they were striving not to be. You had people whose family would tell them, look, we didn't tell anyone where you were for a long time. Just say you left the country. Just say you were. I was told by many people that I should just forget about my past and try to move on with my life. But how can you not talk about something that at the time was really the majority of my life? I'm not supposed to talk about the fact that I spent 20 years in prison. This should not be a factor of shame to hide. My past does not define who I am today. I brought my mom here, and I want to ask her what it was like for her. 
I spent most of my adult life in and out of prison. When someone is sentenced to prison, they do their sentence and most of the time are rehabilitated and deserve a chance, like everybody else, to pursue their dreams. My own piece is about being on the board that the District Attorney of San Francisco has for formerly incarcerated individuals. I was prosecuted by this office two dozen times in my life, and never in a million years would I think I'd be on the board of the same prosecuting office. When I applied to Loyola Marymount, I wanted to be seen in that well-rounded package, and not because I had went to jail and prison or had dealt with you know, substance abuse addiction issues. I didn't want that to be leading my story. The University of Resilience popped into my head. Essentially, it was how I looked to my future. I was like so constrained to put it actually on there, and Gregor was like, just put it on, put it on. Because from the art perspective, it was like, use your imagination. It's not like a lot of formerly incarcerated people like have lost their imagination. It's important to create a future ID because it gives the participant the ability to use their imagination. I think there's a certain a permission or allowance that society affords artist and artistic production. It becomes an invitation an invitation to engage uh, ideas, concepts that might otherwise be challenging for people to entertain. <laughs> I just want to touch everybody because this is my family. You're my family. Many people I love and care about have been affected by the system. But because I've never been convicted, it's very important that people with this lived experience are central to the direction and messaging of this work. One, two. I do that every morning. It represents the past, the present, and the future. I came to prison when I was 19 years old, got out when I was 60. To have a job, to pay rent, to get up and fix your own meals every day, this is freedom. My ID reflects what I've wanted in my life. I have an opportunity to connect with people through motherhood. Thank you for helping create this space. The freedom that I get to live today in my life through choices I've made over the course of the past almost 15 years has continually given me a, another chance and uh, that's the message I like to convey to the people that cross my path in the life that I live today. So much of your life is identified by the card you carry. Your license, your certifications, your business card. For those who are systems impacted, your life for a long time was identified by your prison ID. Power to the people. So rather than ask what do you want your life to have been, we ask people to project into the future, what would you like your life to be?